Hi, this is Forrest Block. I'm going to talk to you today about cancer, cancer treatment, cancer research, what we've learned in the last 30 or 40 years, what we expected to learn, and where we're going to go from here. I have a consulting company called Farm Status, farmstatus.com. I do competitive intelligence, new developments in pipeline drugs, look clinical trials. This is part three, tumor suppressor genes. Tumor suppressor genes, they suppress the development of malignancies. And in fact, that means cancer. So normally all DNA tumor viruses that cause tumors in experimental animals or humans encode proteins that inactivate both of these tumor suppressor genes, RB and P53. DNA tumor viruses can turn off tumor suppressor genes. Function is to inhibit cell proliferation, to halt unregulated cell growth. It's a cell cycle control of da damage and inappropriate signals. So it's a place to say, wait, stop. Now the thing is that if you have one good copy of a tumor suppressor gene, remember all your chromosomes you have two copies of, if you have one good copy, that's all you need. It's a recessive trait. So both gene copies must be defective for cancer. If you're born with one bad and one good, then over time you may get a defective second one. So your backup may go. <laughs> Examples are the RB gene occurs in 30 to 40 percent of all human cancers. So that is even higher than um, Inheritance, it's higher than infection. P53 prevents replication of damaged DNA in normal cells. So you can imagine that if you have just, you're out in the sun, you're exposed to chemicals, just normal processes, you get a mutation in your DNA. Normally what would happen is that that cell won't be able to reproduce if it can't be fixed by the time it gets around to mitosis of that cell. Examples are APC, MEN, F, NF1. We can see here looking at comparing oncogenes with um, tumor suppressor genes. Overactivity mutation, gain of function, is an oncogene. If we have a single mutational event from a proto-oncogene, because it does something positive, it's a gain of function, even one mutation will cause you to start making bad protein. But for an underactivity mutation, such as a loss of function, for example, a tumor suppressor gene, we still have one good example of the tumor suppressor gene if we only have one bad copy. We need two mutations for the tumor suppressor gene to be turned off. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, so for P53, that's another suppressor gene. It's also sometimes called the guardian of the genome. It's a transcription factor, which again, transcription is DNA to RNA. It activates cell cycle arrest to allow DNA to be repaired. So in this case, it stops the cell cycle from progressing before the DNA can be replicated and says, wait, stop, this DNA is damaged, don't replicate it, fix it first, then you can carry on. Phosphorylated P53 activates the transcription of the P21 gene. So here is P53 sitting on the DNA. It's phosphorylated, see that? and it can initiate transcription to make this CDK inhibitor, P50, P21. P21 is a CDK inhibitor that stops the G1 to S transition. So again, it stops the cell from duplicating its DNA. Okay? If the DNA is irreparable, P53 will initiate apoptosis. So it'll. Mm, apoptosis. Good question, good question. Apoptosis is programmed cell death. So what P53 will do is it's, it'll stop it and it'll say, okay, let's see what we can bring into bear to fix this DNA. 
Let's try to fix and repair this DNA with some DNA polymerases. If it's just too far gone, and we can't be sure that it's right, then it will send a signal for apoptosis, which will basically tell the cell to kill itself. If there is a disruption or deletion of the p53 gene, there won't be any p53 protein made, this guy, um, you won't be able to correct DNA damage, and you won't be able to turn off, to turn on the self-destruct signal. DNA repair genes, such as BRCA, and this is, BRCA is something that you've heard a lot about, Angelina Jolie. Do you remember her? She had, I don't know if you know this, but she had her um, breasts removed because she was carrying the BRCA gene. Whatever decision individuals come up with for how to deal with that. But I think it's best to be informed about what your chances are and what it means to you. DNA repair genes ensure that each strand of the DNA is accurately copied. So when we have a DNA, DNA, as you know, is um, double-stranded, right? So when it's replicated, we have two strands. And both of these strands, ultimately, on, in two different mechanisms, are going to get copied. So we have to be sure that they're accurately copied. Mutations in DNA repair genes result in an increase in the frequency of mutations for other genes. Stay tuned for part four. Thank you for listening.